Okay, Yifong, thank you for doing this. Um, great honor, great privilege, and, and actually very nice to meet you for the first time. Uh, John of Firewall has actually um, agreed very kindly to come and co-host this uh, special interview with me. I just want to introduce you, Yifong, if possible. Uh, what I understand from John is that you're a Malaysian uh, entrepreneur. You are also a private investor. You do like your, to do your own research. You do man manage your own money. And I guess the context in which I'm asking you to do this is the fact that th there are a lot of ordinary Joes out there who are, in a way, by some definition, you know, the, the typical millionaire next door, you know, the ones who have done their own thing and, and found their own path in life. So I guess over to you, John, uh, to Yifong, and just give, a bit, give us a bit of background as to where you've come from, yeah, and the transition to investing. Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, so I started learning about investing from my father. He gave me a book. Uh, Peter Lynch's book on investing, in this case, one up on Wall Street when I was about, uh, I think, about 14, 15 years old. And that helped me go directly to investing and reading it and just got me interested. I always found it to be fascinating to learn into that area. Um, a little bit about my background, why for all these Malaysians who are listening to this, why I have this horrible American accent is because when I was seven, I grew up, my parents uh, migrated to the United States and I grew up in Texas uh, and lived there until I was 15. Then when I was uh, uh, around that time, my parents migrated back to um, uh, Singapore and then I studied at the Singapore American School for three years. And then afterwards, uh, I went to a military college of Vermont and I got a double major degree in business management and computer information system. And then after I did my terms and service in America, I came back and I have, that was about 2000. I've been pretty much investing in the local stock market ever since. Before that, I would invest, I would advise and invest my mother in the stock markets here in Malaysia and given what I learned and lost about quite a lot of her money. I think I lost her about $40,000 when I went with my first uh, recommendations to her, True Tech, I think. And that, that was like $40,000, what, 20 years ago? Today's what, maybe $120,000? It's not small change. So after that, I got back in uh, Malaysia. I uh, basically I've been investing in Malaysian stock market ever since. I worked eight years with SAP Malaysia uh, as a, a computer support and uh, basis support consultant. And afterwards, uh, from 2009 to 2010, I then uh, became an independent consultant. And then I worked into other firms. And then 2011, 20, about there, I quit and did, started doing my own thing because by then my investments had already earned me quite enough that I felt independent enough that I could try to do something different. Uh, I ran a game company, but in this case it was a, a game events uh, company called MagaCon. I think uh, you might have, some of you might have heard of it, but I don't care. Um, after that, I, I did that for two years, and then after MagaCon, I then opened my own game store uh, specializing in miniature war games. I uh, did that for about five years, successfully sold it for quite a good sum of money. And then I, you can say I'm semi-retired now. I, I'm married with a wife and three children. So I don't really do much outside of investing and just taking care of my kids with my, uh, kind of like, uh, kind of like stay home dad with my wife. Nice, and nice. Uh, of course, I do manage my own um, money, and I do actively watch and read the stock market every day as much as possible and, and then invest in and trade based on my viewpoints. I'll be honest, last year I didn't do so much of it. That's okay because due to COVID I was and the fact that my children were all home, I spent most of last year just helping with, out, making sure the kids got their classes and school in order. Yeah, so, you know, Yifong, in, in the early days before you cashed out of your business, right, I, I guess that was when you were, in, in a way, having to invest with a limited um, number of bullets, I presume, right, because you were still working in the, in the, in the corporate world. 
Um, what were some of the lessons you learned in that era? In the corporate world? Yeah, when when you were investing, you know, while you're still working at SAP and 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 in that era. The only thing I learned in the corporate environment, other than just some social skills and dealing with people, and how to and and meeting my wife there, I guess one of the few major things I learned was how. Uh, no, as in learning about the investment world, as in when you're still working at, at SAP and you're in parallel investing as well, I presume, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the early lessons that you learned from when you were investing at that time before you had got out of your business, before you had done professional, well, full-on, full-time investing? I've been, the, the, frankly, the, the strategy I've been investing in has, has at best, I learned it about when I was 15, so that makes it like 20, 30 years ago now, pretty much. So that is, to me, what I learned there when I started reading the one up on Wall Street and how to read balance sheets. That, that hasn't changed for 20 years, ever since I've been back. The methodology and the techniques I used to invest and study, which was Peter Lynch's style, which is studying the business and then understanding it, and then just learning that any business can make you money is, in fact, it, it, it hasn't really changed much. That's been my same, the same investment strategy going on for a long time. The only difference I've learned in the past 20 years is how to manage myself and maybe learn a few tricks in investing here and there. But frankly learning it while in the corporate world other than just understanding how uh, the intricacies of a corporate environment is in comparison to say entrepreneurship and also how what is supposedly how a company should exist on paper compared to how it exists in stylistically in real life when I'm seeing it just shows all it does all it did was reinforce that what I look that uh, the Peter Lynch's principles of investment, which is one of his in, his principles. When I first read it, basically boiled down to find a business that's idiot proof, because <laughs> frankly, in my experience in the corporate world, there were a lot of idiots in there. Yeah. From middle management to lower management to the people I worked with to uh, all the way up to the top. So what you're supposed to do is just find a business that. Uh, you most likely that can basically run on rails by itself and once you do that invest in it and it will grow yeah. no matter how because Before, probably yeah. probably a question for, for for those especially those beginning invest beginner in investors right they they always find a struggle especially in employment to actually find the capital to actually start investing besides acquiring the skill besides reading and all that kind of thing what would, what advice would you give them learning from your experience you know Okay, uh, now for getting capital, that's a different story. For beginning investors, uh, what I would recommend is already, if you're already, say, out of college and you are, if you're not in debt, then that's fine. If you are planning to go to college, but you're going to get yourself in debt to go to college and you're a beginning investor, don't go to college. It's useless. You, you, you're making yourself in, in, indebted and you're basically putting yourself in a financial a disadvantage when you start off with your investment compared to those when you can start off earlier. Now, do, you, do I think that getting in college will help you with that, will help you get you a, a, good, a good amount of money? Yes, it gets you that good job that you want, that uh, say a, a higher paying salary than say the average person who has no education. Yes, but does it really matter? Since uh, 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 Chong, since you yourself said that this is kind of like a millionaire next door, you read the millionaire next door, right? Yeah, what? absolutely. Okay, yeah, you years read ago. The you read the first one. Have you read the second one? The, no. The, okay. Well, the second one puts a story in where he, he gives a story of how this man who was a, um, basically one of the people he interviewed was a guy who had who has about three million American dollars saved up and his whole entire life, what did he do? He drove a bus. He was a bus driver his whole entire <laughs> life. 
Fantastic. He, he paid for his daughter's uh, college fees, everything all by himself. And all he did was just drove a bus out of a bus uh, driver's wages. Mm. He paid for his, his house, all that, and still had $3 million after all that is done. How did he do it? Well, frankly, he one of the advantages of ha driving a bus, I, I would guess, is that it is you got a lot of time in your hand in between those uh, those trips. the time when you have to the trips. So what you can do is just take the time to read, read up on the latest uh, financial papers and installments where everybody else is going around drinking or watching the latest football games or stuff like that. He was reading Financial Times. He was reading up all the advice columns. He was reading up on businesses. He was looking at all the balance sheets and, and just reading that. If you got the time, then why? So if there's any advice I can give to people for getting yourself in capital is start saving money. Learn to live below your means. If Especially if you're single, yeah, you that's that's not hard. Especially yeah. guys, girls. Yeah. 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 Yifeng, I, I couldn't help but pick up the, you, you were saying earlier that um, maybe going to college might be a waste of time. Yeah. And perhaps even more relevant a statement now because obviously you pay a lot of money to go to college. Is that, I mean, what is your, what, what is the message that you talk to your, tell your children about, especially since you have three of them, right? What, what do you tell them? I, what I've, I, I don't send the message is, is that I, uh, what my wife and I work on is under, we are very careful about the lessons we want to teach our children every mm. day in regards to a lot of things. One of them is work ethic. You might not like the job. That's one of the things I tell my sons but, and my daughter. You might not like the job. That You might not like doing this, but you got to do it. You don't like homework? You got to do it. So how do you do it? Let's let's play the game. Let's figure it out. Once they got that work ethic and the attitude that they can handle themselves and they could figure out for themselves. Now, you notice I said I didn't tell my daughter how they can do their homework, mm. how they can figure it out. What I tell them is that here's the problem. You figure it out. And if they can, then they can. If they can't, we talk about it. We do a review. Maybe you could do this next time. Maybe you can't do it this differently. And when they figure it out, that's a great feeling for them. I want my children to be able to handle themselves without me. Mm. And we had, and one of my prouder moments as a parent or as a father was one time by accident, my wife and I were out of the house and the driver we hired to, to take my kids home was early and we were delayed coming home so my kid there was nobody in the house and my kids couldn't come in because we locked the door mm. so most people and we were late by i think 30 this was just i think a few two three years ago we were late by about several hours so instead oh, of gosh. waiting for the, the instead of waiting uh my kids knew where i keep the uh keys at the same, they know, but they couldn't get through the gate because I had locked the gate. Mm -hmm. So instead of panicking and worrying about it, my uh, son, who, my second son, uh, the elder son, the second one in the family, he went through the garbage chute to get to the other side of the gate. <laughs> and so he figured it out. Yes, he figured out. He he had to fiddle around with the lock. What he did was he had to like just kind of like just keep fiddling it until it finally opened the door so he could get in. But he did. Yes, he had to go through all the junk and crap. It was it wasn't a very pleasant experience, but he did. And when my wife and I saw that, they were they went and we were like we were ourselves were kind of worried. We're like, oh my god, what's happened? Because my driver said, oh, we're we're here. What do we do, Mr. Chang? I'm like, uh, wait for us. We'll be there, but we're stuck in traffic. And then the driver says, oh, they're fine later. And he says, oh, they're in now. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so my wife comes in and then we get the story from them. We found out what had happened and we we're super pr happy and proud. That's the type of thing I want my children to learn. That's the habit I want. Mm -hmm. That You can't learn that in college. College, maybe you can. But I feel that you should be learning that now when they're younger. They should be self-reliant now. Then they should be learning that stuff in college. And they don't have that skill. They don't have the 
the knowledge to educate, the only desired reliance to educate themselves, to learn to do the things they want, then what's the use of them going to college? And what's the use of them in future life? What, even if they go to college, what are they going to learn? Do, do you impart any of your... Uh, sorry, Chong, go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, do, do you impart any of your investing... Do, do you tell them that uh, you actually invest and, and, and manage your own money in some way? Do yes, they understand that our, quite a lot of our money comes from me investing in the stock market. They don't know how it works out yet. They're still too young. My eldest daughter is 13. She's nearing the age where I would uh, have this talk with her uh, about how what is the capital market and how to use it. But frankly uh i i want them to enjoy their childhood a bit more maybe another two years then i will discuss it with her she's not very the eldest she herself feels she's not very strong at math i don't know but mm -hmm. i figured i can at least uh another few years it's time she start learning Be it's the thing is this investing in the capital market is not the only way you can save up money for yourself in the future to get yourself financial independence it is a convenient way it is one of the more well-known tools available right now to do it and it's a very i consider it easy but maybe not for everybody there yeah. are many other type of things that you can invest in i remember seeing uh sue one of your videos where you, somebody was talking about investing in whiskey that's correct yes. Yeah, wine, oh, yeah. fun, yeah. and whiskey, alcohol, and those things. Yeah, why not also? Then why not also collect uh, the uh, coins, numismatic. That's a yeah. form of investments. There are coins that are worth. If you get it right, you find the right coin. You can just have, let's say, you you bought a ten ring of coin that just suddenly is worth three three thousand in the right right market tomorrow, or buying collectible items, toys. Yeah, you, found, you, you say you find investing easy, right? I, I, I guess that's partly a function of the fact that your dad gave you this book at, when you're 14 years old. You've been involved in it one way or another. For, yeah, 15, for the past 30 years, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. What makes it easy for you? Was it the practice? Was it the, the fact that you got your hands dirty uh, early um, on? Yes, I think it was also the practical aspect that I got my hands dirty early on. It helped. The other fact was just um, Peter Lynch's philosophy of investment boiled down to invest in what you know. Anything is worth money. Mm. Keep your eyes open for that opportunity. And I think I'll answer one of your later questions when you ask me about one of my successes. One of my earlier uh, big investments was 2002, 2003 in Malaysia was uh, when I was still working at SAP, I think I bought about uh, was a company called uh, MOLAC, Malaysian Online Access. Uh, they're now known as MOL. They're the ones you see. They uh, they were uh, MOL points. You guys familiar with MOL? Yeah, points? that's right. Yeah. 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 I was one of the early investors. I bought pff, about 600,000 shares of that when it started out, 2003. And how did I get into MOLAC? Well, I, the only invest, the investment advice as Peter Lynch said was keep your ears open and eyes open for opportunities. Go around your your the uh, go around your malls, go around shopping centers. Keep your eyes open, see what are opportunities. My opportunity was simple. My friends were playing World of Warcraft online every goddamn day. I call them <laughs> up during the 2003. I ask them, hey guys, you want to go out for a drink or go out my and everything? And they basically said, ah, oh, no, I'm busy raiding. I got my clans and I'm going, like, and I'm just going like sitting going, farish, uh, you fucking <laughs> gosh. And going, yeah, well, I'm bored. That stinks. And then I thought to myself, and I remember Peter Lynch's principle was like, well, invest in the opportunities you see in front of you. And my thought was, well, how can I make it so that every time I hear them say that they're spending money online, I will feel happy because they're paying me sort of theoretically. So invest in a company. So why not find a company that is involved with the system of this infrastructure or stuff like that? So I asked my friends, so uh, when you guys go online, what do you guys use to, to pay for your uh, WoW membership, a World, World of Warcraft online membership? And... Well, my friend was saying, oh, I, um, I use Mo Lee points. 
Okay. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. So I just went straight to Moli and Molag. I looked at their balance sheets. I mean, by then I already understood uh, the basic accounting principles. Uh, so I, I, I read their balance sheets uh, and looked at what it meant. And I said, oh, well, they look okay. Then I went, uh, one of Peter Lynch's things was go visit the company. So I went to their, luckily their office at the time was near my office in SAP Malaysia. So I walked over to the office just down the road at uh, Jalan Tun Razak or Jalan, I, I can't remember the damn name now. Jalan Templar. Fuck, no, 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 wrong. One. Anyways, doesn't matter. And I went and met with the company secretary and asked her, so, and I, I just say, hey, can I buy your drink? We'll talk. I want to know about the company. I'm interested in buying the co investing in the company. Sat down with her for uh, some, uh, I think it was, I think coffee or something. And She obliged. Well, tea, t tea break. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, and you, you said that you, you're, you're doing what? You, yeah, you're doing what? What any self-respecting top um, research analyst would do, which is to go down to the ground, hit the hit the, hit the street, and see with your own eyes and you listen with your with your own ears exactly what's going on in the business. Yeah, I know that's theoretically what the the people on the street supposed to do, or say the guy who's a top investor is supposed to do. I don't see enough of top investors do it nowadays in Wall Street. Too many times mm. they just talk among themselves and say, "Oh, well, I heard this was good. I heard that was good." They follow technical analysis and momentum thinking. I uh, I'm not saying that is wrong because they have a very different, uh, shall I say, target now for their investing style than me. All I want is just financial wealth, and they have a different uh, pressure from their businesses and companies. So that requires a different type of investment strategy from me. So I don't think it's right. I think that's actually incorrect, but it is what it is. So how I, do you I, 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 how do you well, generate ideas, um, Yifeng? How do you ideate your next investing idea i just keep my ears open keep my eyes and ears open i every time there's an opportunity i i just i just keep it up I, I guess the best thing people can do is is uh just read everything i like reading books uh i've been a reader my whole life i guess uh i make i try to i pass that down to my children i i didn't care what they read my daughter is reading well, very advanced level of English today. She's seventh grade in a, a IB school, but there the teachers were surprised when they interviewed her that she was reading Oscar Wilde and wow. advanced British literature when they were doing the interview. And I just thought, well, isn't that what their kids are supposed to read, or at least what they if they want to interest in that should be their reading level. That's that's not that hard. I mean, I understand if they can't read the original uh, Shakespeare in its English, nor they can she uh, read, like, say, translations of old Anglo-Saxon poems. That's a foreign, that's a different language, but English is English. Once you learn it. These are either the worst of times or the best of times. I mean, some people would say that times like this is the best time to be buying when everybody's afraid. Do you, do, you, do you agree with that, Yifeng? There's always an opportunity everywhere. You keep your eyes open for the opportunities. Uh, I mean, one question that you guys threw at me uh, earlier, John, you asked me to look at, like, can, I, can this skill be passed on to everybody else, uh, my investment attitude or skills? I'm like, um, if you can control your emotions, yes, that means my personal feeling about it is, well, if you did this think that Donald Trump is the worst president of the United States and that Joe Biden is going to be the best president of the United States, then no, I can't help you because you are <laughs> too enamored with your emotions to actually decide what were his good points and what are the bad points of this? What is the good things of this style? What is the bad points? I made money during Trump's administration. I made money during Obama's administration. I've made money during Bush's, the financial crisis. It doesn't matter. The opportunities will always be there. People made money during the market disasters of a uh, Black Friday of twenty of nineteen twenty nine. Some people made money years down the road during the Great Depression. Uh, it, it's not a question of the time.
So, so I, I know, well, to the extent that you can share some of the secret sauce, uh, Yu Fong, what is some of the secret sauce that you can pass on to the investor? Okay. Uh, one of my, one thing I've learned through the years, if there's anything I've learned is to control my emotions in regards to investment. And what I mean by that, I it means like, don't panic. Don't do anything to stop yourself from panicking. Or at least control. How, how, are there practices? I mean, like for the normal investor who's just probably not say um, beginner, but probably an intermediate guy. I mean, this is an advice that people keep on telling us emotion control whatsoever. But do you have any tricks or methods on how to practice that? Have a wife or and kids. Or is it innate? Sorry? Have a wife and kids. Make sure you're one of those fathers who spend a lot of time with your kids. Mm. Because that's, that's you're too good. busy watching the kids to worry about the stock market every day when it's fluctuating. I, I think that's it's it's true. I yeah. I learned everything more or less everything I've learned in the past 5 years. The only thing that I've really uh, enhanced upon is learning how to control myself and my emotions in regards to the investments. Once you learned all once you studied as much as you can about a stock and once you learn all the fundamental information you need to know about the stock you sh it, you and once you understand what are the factors that goes into that cause the stock to fluctuate, real fluctuation, not the normal fluctuation of a normal daily market fluctuation due to a lot of things like including uh, companies loving the short companies like GameStop right now and stuff like that. And, and, and just walk away from that. And then once you learned, to, once you've done all the research, you should just walk away from that you've done you bought it you're worried every day yes uh and then you learn ways to focus your mind out of it Ex uh i think the best example i learned about understanding the, my emotions on this was uh i listened to a podcast a few uh a few years ago by uh any of you guys fans of mma yeah, yeah. okay you guys know a guy named george st pierre right yeah yeah, GSP. Best, yeah, yeah, GSP. Yeah, he's one of the best on the, on the thing. Now, GSP had an interview with Joe Rogan, and That's during right. the interview, he had a he explained one of the things he learned. People ask him constantly since he's been, like, he's had the most uh, title defenses, out of almost everybody else. And they asked him, so how do you handle the stress? How do you get any? Do you get any? How do you get any sleep the night before your title defense? And GSP just says to Rogan and his, the people that ask him that is like, I don't. I learned a long time ago that I am not going to sleep the night before a title defense. And no matter what, whether that helps me or hurts me, it doesn't matter because I found that not sleeping hasn't affected the outcomes of every title defense I've had in the past or in the future. So it's something I've learned to accept. It's just like I've learned to accept that I am going to be scared out of my wits and worrying every day. Oh, is this did this is this really bad? Oh, is this news really bad or is it not bad or is it good? Oh God, this is horrible. Oh geez, they did this. Oh God, they started a war. My word. And it just you just realize all of it is just noise. Okay, oh this guy said he he likes this stock. Oh, it's gonna go up now. Why isn't it going up? Is there something going happening in the background? What it's just it gets to be one of those where you real I'm I'm like I can get be I can become an emotional basket case, but I've come to realize that yeah it's part of the it comes with the territory. I'm since I'm investing my money I've just gonna have to learn to just accept that I will be an emotional va basket case, but it doesn't affect the outcome as long as I stay true to my investment strategies. Yeah, I mean you can see that with Conor McGregor, right? When when he used to come out for a fight, he was so calm, so loose. Yeah. And uh, he, yeah, he just knocked the other guy out in like ten seconds or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it takes a long time to control your emotions, and some people then they never get there, right, Yifeng? Um, why don't you? What, when did you make the conscious decision to do it yourself and not to outsource that whole task to like a professional fund manager? Uh, well, I found that I never liked. I I always figured I could do better than fund managers, thanks to Peter Lynch. I always figured, oh well, I'm the guy on the street i know i can i see an uh, better opportunities than these fund managers because these guys have to go through they 
every time I read fund managers, it's always they, they talk about, oh, this company. Outside of Warren Buffett, most of them just read company reports. They talk about this company. They talk about that. And half the time, I think they just went to the company meetings and believe what the bullshit the CEO said. And to me, that seems like uh, that's not right. Shouldn't they be going to see the what the freaking tea lady at the office is doing and talk to her about how they're running things first before he goes listen to the CEO? That's right. So you believe in the scuttlebutt process yourself. And I think, do, do you enjoy that scuttlebutt process in a way? Yes, I enjoy the, uh, I, I find, I guess the best thing I found was I enjoy the research or I enjoy the investigation. I, I find myself enjoying the, the studying or the investigation of a lot of things, not just, uh, not just in investments, but on anything like uh, history or mysteries or why. I, I, it's always something I've found like, okay, when somebody says something, my first reaction has always been, what do they mean by that? What does that mean? Like, okay, uh, like uh, a stupid one. Sometimes it, I shouldn't be doing this, but I do it f because I can. Uh, internet memes, when people throw in some of the positive messages. Uh, there's a good one a while back. Uh, somebody sent something that said, okay, due to the Roman roads being this wide that created that made it so that trucks that was a 3,000 years ago, Roman roads were this big, so they were designed for the size of trucks and horses and blah, 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 blah. And because we got our roads, modern roads and railroads were based on Roman road sizes because they had to fit a certain thing. And so what that means is the space shuttle and the, the most advanced technology in the world, the shuttle system, they, that the, they, they made the booster rockets for the space shuttle or the... the, the um, the Apollo missions had to be a certain size because that's how large the roads could be. And they say, oh, that's linked to the Roman roads. When I read that, I went, really? I have pretty <laughs> very good knowledge of history. I don't remember the Roman roads being that wide. And there were some facts in those things that made me go, that doesn't make sense. I don't remember the Roman roads de being designed for chariots or wagons because chariots, the, the Roman roads were designed for their military, yes. And so they were designed for soldiers, uh, this many soldiers spaced so many s wide and at the same time for other armies to march a certain way to help speed up their army. Yeah. It's not designed for wagon size. So our modern roads. So I went and dug a little bit and the truth of the matter is no. Roads, modern roads and their length was based upon other things. There is whatever length is, is there is very minor. It's not, it's not, oh, due to the size of a, a chariot, horse chariot, or wagon. It's just due to the fact that roads had to be a certain size. There was how much space they were available. This was uh, earlier cars were made a certain size because they based it on certain other technologies, including the wagon size and length. And that's how roads were. But that's about it. We didn't get that much. There, there isn't that great of a linkage to the Romans. I see. Yeah. I mean, is that important to have that curiosity as an investor? Do I, you think so? I don't know. <laughs> I I have no idea. Warren Buffett does seem to have that doesn't seem to have that curiosity. That guy's he has his, what he believes in. He has his style of investing. Uh, uh, other investors seem to have it. Mo some don't. Uh, so I don't know. It worked I mean, for me. There's, there's this new, there's this new school of thought that says value investing doesn't work. Warren Buffett is outdated. His methodologies are old, and uh, people are coming up with uh, thematic investing, growth investing. What, what are your thoughts on that, Yifong? I mean, as as a retail investor yourself, those people can retire their own money their own way. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Maybe I am yeah. old fashioned. I, I, I'm not going to say instantly that, oh, people will say, you're old fashioned, your old way is outdated. I will say that all power to you. If you're going to make yourself a fortune that way, go on right ahead. Mm -hmm. I am where I am because I chose this path. It hasn't, I don't do it. I didn't get here by just 
uh, choosing other paths. Some of them might even be better. I don't, I don't regret my path. Hmm. Uh, not much. So you found because you do a lot of the research yourself and you hit the ground, yeah, and you spend a lot of time talking to people before you commit. And I presume, from the sound of it, when you commit, you you truly commit. Yeah. Um, in yeah. terms of your investment, yeah. Yeah, my style was. I guess the best th- the way to look at my style is. Uh, Everybody says, don't put all your eggs in one basket. My philosophy was, yes, I'm going to put all m- most of my eggs in one basket, but I'm going to watch that basket like a hawk. Meaning okay. everything I need to know about things that are around the basket, I'm watching every day and just keeping an eye out for those. So but by, by that, by correlation, does that mean you've only got why, literally five to ten names in your portfolio? Or, or, what right on my portfolio, them? I got two shared. I got about... Uh, three stocks. They're in the millions, yes, but I don't have very many stocks in my portfolio. Uh, of course, this portfolio is due to me being also lazy now. The pat in 2020, I was uh, due to COVID and having to spend time with family. I backed up on too much uh, to actively invest in the share market. I just bought stocks that I figured that will eventually get me to a good place while I spend time with my wife and family. Um, this year has been different and I'm steadily increasing my portfolio size now and increasing the number of shares in my portfolio. I plan to be doing more active investing this year, doing tradings. I mean, there are a lot of strategies to it. I just chose not to do them the last few years. So what, what, what kind of things are you watching out for this year and what, what sectors or themes are you, are you seeing some interest in? Uh, the thing I'm looking, I, I don't look for sectors. What I'm looking for is, is that, okay, this big thing happened. Whenever, that means a reaction in one side. Whenever there's a reaction in one side, usually there's an opposite reaction in the business and market in another side. One, okay, uh, airlines didn't, don't benefit that well from COVID, fine. What businesses did co- benefit from COVID? transports yeah the logistics a lot of like grab all these companies doing a lot of shipping uh companies that are doing things that are involved i guess with zoom or internet oh well that's a lot of money think like that just look into those areas that everybody what more uh, people's habits change the only way where there won't be actual growth in a stock is if you kill a billion people Otherwise, they're, they're, the, the, the people will still be alive. They're going to choose to put their money somewhere else or choose to put their time in a different area. You just have to find out where it is. I mean, one area, I think, the thing is, is that, and, and what bothers me is how uh, people always choose to read the newspapers and then go, oh, maybe I should buy this share now in company, when they should be going like, uh, as Peter Lynch and a lot of other investors, invest in what you know. Th- but more than that, think about what happened. What is some? What are s- recent trends? Look at all the stuff that all the branches and all the little little fingers that branch out from those trends. Example: Bitcoin. All right. So, what are the <laughs> winners in Bitcoin? What companies are winners in Bitcoin? due to Bitcoin or, or, or not Bitcoin, but let's just say uh, cryptocurrency. What are the biggest winners for cryptocurrency? The miners, the guys who produce the graphic cards. Uh, okay, the guys, do- What the, you just said one, the guys who produce the graphics cards, right? Yeah. Because people were getting into the miners. Yes. So what was the price of Nvidia five years ago before crypto started getting bigger? Oh, I- I, I can't recall it, but uh, twenty six dollars. What's the current price of Nvidia today? Five years now, down the line since crypto's gone so big. Five hundred. Five hundred. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah. Probably. I can okay, no, Google it right now. <laughs> it's five hundred. I just checked. Okay. Five hundred okay. plus. And that is boring. Nobody hears about it, exactly. you get, other than just those sitting into the corners in their families who who are involved with this but frankly i kind of look at it i'm going like so all those crypto miners yeah you you put a lot of money into mining fine so when crypto starts going down why don't you guys put your money into uh, nvidia stocks or all these graphics mm. cards since you guys know that 
you see these graphics these millions of graphics cards you're buying is literally you're making these companies richer yeah i i exactly. told my sister that thing and she bought it in video at 70 like several years ago but she had to marked it up to like 300 and i but then it when it got that level she sold but i told her you should have kept it but oh well <laughs> So what are the, some well, of the successes yeah. for you then, Yifeng? Uh, more recent one, the most recent one, I think the one that John knows about is a company called Dufu. And I like to, I, I wouldn't mind talking about it because it outlines something. I, it, it has, I've got two good example stories out of it. How did yeah. I learn about it was, uh, yes, networking is great, uh, especially when you're an investor. Uh, during my presentation about uh, uh, John, you were when we were at uh, yeah this were, December twenty eighteen, I think. Uh, no, when you were asking me to do a presentation on uh, what was it? Uh, uh, research think, methods. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think it was on the yeah. It might have been on uh, what I thought would be in uh, what was, hard disk stocks. Yeah. Yeah, and. What happened was, looking at it, I said, well, there's a potential for a hard disk market to bounce back because, frankly, hard disks aren't going to disappear, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Then, uh, right after that, one of the investors in the audience, I met with him. I'm like, hey, and him and I chatted. And then I find out he works for Western Digital. I'm like, oh, okay, so you're into hard disk. Yeah, we get a lot of hard disk. I'm like, okay. So I asked him, so you're investing, right? I'm like, yeah. I asked him, so... If you were investing right now due to the hard disk market, which company would you be interested in? You know, so he instantly just said, oh, Dufu. We bought a lot of hard disks from them recently because of this type of hard disk, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, that's interesting. So then I did my own investigation. I'm like, oh, that's there's two types of hard disks. One that's hard disk for the common users and PC and laptops. That market is shrinking. But the ones for data storage, which is in the huge, you know, Ter terabyte range of massive ter like 20 30 terabytes per disk range storage no that one is growing and shooting up like mad and then i went oh where's helium and i'm going and then i find oh dufu's the biggest one of the biggest manufacturers in malaysia on that well okay so i put my money in it i put a lot of money into it and yeah you can if people want they can go through i3 investor i i feel uh, I and I did get involved in some of the forum talks. I gave my viewpoints and my output in my usual blunt manner in those in the forums. If you want to read it, laugh at how I talk. That's fine. I don't care. Uh, and but eventually, Dufu went up to ridiculous levels, and everybody's now talking about all the research I did. They're all saying and and. Everybody's going around bragging that they discovered it. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> All I can say was this was what I learned. This was what I was seeing. This was an area untouched that nobody was even paying attention to. So I can mm -hmm. park a lot of money into it. Now, yeah. there's the fir that's the first story. The second story is this about learning to control your emotions on it. That same guy who recommended Dufu to me, yes, he bought a lot of that company. Yes, and he is directly relations or whatever and things like that. But because Dufu didn't go up for a very long time due to these things take time for the story to be heard, he panicked and sold long before it went up. He made some money. He made like 10, 20% or I don't remember what was the amount, but he didn't make the ungodly five times 10 bagger. I think it was six times what initial investment was it's about six seven times uh, yeah, i'm six, still holding on yeah to six seven yeah. times the initial investments out of that yeah. you know and he panicked what was his reasons i i i talked to him later he told me he sold he had somewhat good reasons but i kind of felt like to me is like and i think he himself realized during that talk with me that yeah maybe i should have held on you know i, I he let noises happen to him and one of the noises I, I talk about is don't listen to your wife. Especially on investing, right? <laughs> uh, it's like this. You and her, she might have her own strategy. She might ha not have. But why was the wife, in my case for my wife, 
she learned a long time ago to not because she realized one of my, my previous investments when she panicked forced me to sell some to get some cash on hand and later when that thing shot up she realized oh we could have made a lot more money and so she realized that yeah best to leave my husband to handle this one keep quiet and stuff like that but in his case um uh, i don't know where i do think it contributed to his fears and concerns and so he lost an opportunity that's the same with, and frankly, I think that's one of those stories that uh, will happen everywhere else. Everybody, uh, you, you, you're going to have so much noise. There's going to be uh, millions of them that just can't, that you don't know what well, what's going to be the, it could be from anywhere. It could be the news articles. It could be family members telling you. It could be your father telling you're an idiot. It, like my father <laughs> has done in the past to me when it comes to mm -hmm. investing my money. And still sometimes do, and also to uh, to just you having a bad day at the office, or you needed the money at the right time or the wrong time. Yifeng, but and, yeah, it, it's what? it's kind of like there, there's two parts to it, right? One part is identifying the stock and of course committing the capital to it, but mm. then the other part is also knowing when to cut out and you know to try and get as much of a bite of the fish as possible. What is the science to that? Uh, okay. Now, there are many techniques and science I find to it. Uh, the easiest would be until I find something that has much better opportunity. Until then, uh, I, I keep my money in the share. Uh, after Dufu shot up, I was looking around, couldn't really find any, but I, then I thought maybe I should put in into uh something else my regret now i guess i would say that i did sell dufu too early when it shot up to like three four times because yeah i could have missed i missed the third or four all the way to seven fine that's that's not that's okay it's not my first one so i'm not gonna cry too much about it because obviously the stock market tanked last year and well because i put in too much capital already maybe some of them went down i c instead of i could have waited and then when the stock market tanked i could have just bought some more what uh there is no perfect timing uh but until you find a, a different one with a better opportunity and how do you, how do i determine that i don't have a perfect answer i would say the easiest one is if you think there is one that's super undervalued now. Uh, you can learn to, you can maybe put the money in. But what I've also learned is if you find something that's very good now, why don't you wait a few weeks? Mm. And if, if the current one you're holding is still making money, don't, why, don't you, why don't you wait a few weeks for the other one to learn maybe the story more? to learn how mm -hmm. people and to see how it's going off and stuff like that and then and, and see how things are if if, you, if you're losing money if, if it's gone if it's if if you feel that it's gone as far as it can fine sell it keep the money and then look for other opportunities but if you're not losing money then uh, and the the situation that made you determine that this share is doing good in this case, hard disk drives uh, for Dufu is still in a very good area, the, 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 those high-end hard disks, because the demand for data is still growing like mad. Yeah. Then yeah. why yeah. bother selling it? Yeah. What, what were the biggest mistakes that you've made so far, Yifu? I mean, it, 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 I, I, earlier you enlightened us with the, the money that your mother passed to you and, you know, I mean, what what did you learn out of it, and something that you could that we could share with us, uh, um, that we could avoid it. First off, um, in my mother's case, it was uh, the thing I learned was just reading up and not doing my own research. I read that other mm. companies said this was good. I read, uh, I did some of the basic studying of the balance sheets, and I thought, oh, that sounded good. But I didn't go to the company and check it out myself. I didn't study what it was the industry like. I didn't go down and think. Well, is this a good? Is this going to be a good story? Five, three years down the road. Um, mm. 
Every, one, I guess one thing you can say is uh, don't be too greedy, which mm -hmm. boils down to don't always try to catch it at its lowest and don't always try to sell it when it's at its highest. At, you're forever not going to be able to mm -hmm. do that. Uh, what you should be doing is wait, uh, is, is, is just study. Is it a good story? Is, it re is the story really good? Mm -hmm. And is it going to stay that way for quite a while then buy the company and I, I said the word quite a while meaning if the economic business or the business itself that is in is going to it, it's, it's in a trending towards a certain path it's trending mm -hmm. upwards these trends usually if done well last a long time mm -hmm. so why do you need to why do you need to worry about oh is it's when is it gonna is is it the highest it's ever gonna go? If this business trend is still going this way, then uh, sky's the limit. I mean, what's the damn price of Facebook today? Yeah, yeah. yeah just as a couple of parting shots before we let you go, Yifong. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about controlling your emotions. You talked about doing the research. Talk, you talked about going to the ground. Um, what other pieces of advice would you give the newbie investor? Uh, for newbie investors, uh, as I say, well, building capital, a lot of people are going to go, um, uh, how do you build capital? I don't, th I would like to start by saying just, just save money, figure it out how to do it. If you're single, you shouldn't be losing money and in debt when you're single, unless you're the type who wants to, you know, spends a bit too much time in the massage parlors. <laughs> The baller is a baller. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I, uh, drinking <laughs> and flour, I don't know. I, I don't think that's if that's the life you want. That's fine. I I that wasn't the life choice I made. I I got lucky, I guess, in the that the things that interested me were relatively cheap. I, I, in general, I like uh, reading books. Uh, uh, just uh, reading into sub and studying other subject matters and, and 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 some sports, but I'm not the type that goes around buying everything that regalia and collectibles on sports. So that's one that would be just start saving your money. The other one is just keep your ears open. Don't don't just uh, you can you if you read somebody uh, the latest trend on something and you just ignored that your own business is already shooting up or the companies you're involved in is already shooting up due to another thing you should be kicked in the head in my opinion but well but that's a lot of people you know i, I don't know like example uh how many people who were involved in do, who were working at dufu how many did they, how many people bought their own business and their own company i don't think so those who were working there me medium full-time i'm sure some of them bought other companies or invested in other companies because they they were they were told that that business was good, but the company management themselves were buying some and then selling some. It just, there is just, uh, invest in what you know, keep your eyes on the ground and keep your ears open. You're, you're better off than most fund managers because fund managers, I don't know, it, it, every impression I have today of fund managers is they're very lazy they're too or they're too enamored with going talking about how cool they are so i see more of them maybe it's because i see most of them being called in to do interviews in wall street journals or 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 bloomberg or whatever i i find that most of them like uh they they talk too much broad stuff it's, it's too high level the details is where the real retail investors and people like me learn. You can find and investigate. And the details are the truth. They're the ones that help you make the money in the long term. I mean, couldn't agree more. Game well, stock is is uh, yeah. is one of those where everybody's looking at it from a high level, or every all the newspapers talking from a high level. Yeah, they're getting it wrong in the opposite direction from what's happening in that direction, but. <sighs> Uh, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm an, an unabashed uh, conservative on my politics, which means that unfortunately I might like Trump, but it's a very reluctant level of liking. 
it's like this. I, I kind of tell people, look, I, I might like him. It's one of those where if you told me 25 years ago, hey, Trump's going to be president of the United States and you're going to support his policies. 25 years, which is 18 years old, me would just say, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Screw you. You, you, you don't deserve, you, you're an idiot. You're not me. Yeah, but you have to be control their emotions and look at the policies you left and look at the details and everything that comes out. And in today's world, it's very easy to get emotional and and not look at the details behind it. It is, it's too easy. Yifong, I said I said I would you know let you go soon, but just one more question, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, J Joe Biden, yeah, he's the new guy. Um, what are you expecting of him? And how does it manifest in the share market? Um. Okay, I don't want to predict where the stock market is going to trend with him uh, because there are many areas that it's unknown about him. And frankly, um, from what I've read about his records, it's not promising because he's been in politics for 40 plus years and now he's president of the United States. Yes, but if you look at his ter term in the 40 years, has he done anything really that makes me go oh stands out that he knows how, what he's going to be doing for the economy and market he's been a politician for 40 plus years so whatever is popular right now what is the current popular policy or what's the thing populist thing or what people's telling him oh this is this is the trending issue right now uh, that's what he'll talk that's what politicians do so what i would guess is that stock market wise I don't know. My personal feeling is we're going to get an initial, oh, everything's great. The evil Nazi is dead. So that's why the stock market's gone out. But after the initial euphoria, everybody's going to start looking at his policies, look at what he's done. And and they're going to start realizing, uh, wait a minute, these aren't long-term good economic policies that would be good for a country or a nation or even globally as a whole. And a note I say economic policies. I, I didn't say that they were great policies. Like his environmental policies, good or bad, he at least is pushing those environmental policies, whatever people feel about global warming or not. But people are going to go, oh, I, I, I think the best way is look at it this way, is to think of it in this as an example. He's pushing environmental or he's he's cut cut off the Alaska pipeline. He uh the recent news where I think anything uh uh the Paris Accord so there'll be new uh uh environmental policies put into place. So whatever, everybody's going to hate him. He's he's bad. It will hurt the American economy. Yes. But which businesses will be helped by those policies? That should be the investor's job to go can I invest in those? Can I do well in those? The market as whole, I kind of feel is going to be is going to be hurt. But that's not your job as an investor. Your your job as an investor or a person's job as an investor is to go. Well, okay, now they're going to focus on this area. Should I put my money into this area? Should I find the most efficient solar cell company, or should I find the most efficient battery company? Should I find the most efficient wind farm company? Blah, blah, blah. All these type of things should be in their mind instead of going, oh, he's mostly going through dementia. Okay, he's a kind of a weird guy. Oh, well, or just like, I don't know, Donald Trump's a narcissistic egomaniac that really needs to be slapped in the head. Can you please stop tweeting? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> there's just, uh, th everything's bad. There's always something bad to find about that. It's just your job is not to to care about that. I, the, the job of an investor is to what can be advantages of having this person in charge. So is he good for the economy as a whole? I cannot say. I personally, from reading his pers past records, not that good. It's going to be somewhat either at, at most a, a flat and then maybe a little drop depending on what he uh, what policies he push and those you have to really look into it and deep and I, I don't mean like just read oh he said this policy okay fine what were the benefits who are the real beneficiaries for those policies 
uh, read into the details. There's always two sides of the coin for any policy. Look, right? look there's a lot of the thing is the, the 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 modern news cycle I think is is bad. It, it it's its job is to basically sensationalize things and create propaganda for one side or another side. You know, uh, and it, it creates fanaticism in the wrong way. I mean, I I I shouldn't be. I feel I shouldn't be speaking of this, but let, let, we can talk a bit about, say, the 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 GameStop issue. I know that you're feeling that uh, Tron, that it's a revolution, but you must understand this thing has been simmering underneath the surface in America f and all the people, uh, so-called uh, conservatives and Republicans or alt-right, whatever names it likes being called or whatever Trump supporters, for a very long time. Not it, it, it didn't just go back to the 2008 uh, uh, financial crisis or the 2014 Occupy Wall Street. There are so many other issues that, that come into that, that, that side. One danger I found about it is it gets very easy to get uh, enamored on your side of the argument. And your job as an investor is not be enamored by that side, is to look at it as to be as neutral about it as much as possible there's always it's not that there's two sides of a coin there's more de there's about a hundred details we're all missing when we're hearing the story a uh, perfect example is the robin hood skedaddle everybody's yeah. screaming thinking that uh one side screaming one the other screaming what but what is the truth what did robin hood do right what did they do wrong why did they suddenly just go on that day and just say hey uh you're allowed to sell you're not allowed to buy yeah everybody instantly think that's manipulation they can't do that that's right blah 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 that's right but no that's not really yeah. what happened no, it's not the, the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is uh what i what i do as a habit nowadays is whenever i read these news sensational on, on either side is i wait uh i wait a week several weeks i don't i don't let my emotions control it i'm tempted to there are times when i really do get angry you know, I, I'm, I've been in the military. I'm a veteran. I, and so I do feel one side and I do get very emotional. But I've learned and it's I'm forever grateful why I say that people should get married and have kids is that I because I'm too busy taking care of my kids every day that I have no time to get angry. I read the news. <laughs> Friggin' Robin, that's that's so me. I think they should be burned, quartered, drawn. I think I'll quarter them myself. No, no, no. I'll <laughs> impale them, hides over, <laughs> skin them alive. Blah blah blah. Do all these things. But as my wife says, uh, you gotta cook dinner, or you gotta uh, the the you know uh, the the young one is just you know, pooped in the ocean or you need to help him out with his class work or, or this, you need to set up the, the Zoom meeting for his class. So, well, I, I couldn't get angry and I had to walk away. Three weeks later, we hear more or a week later, we hear more of the nuance and the details. In this case, Robin Hood just, the reason why they couldn't was, I think it boiled down to they didn't have enough capital. They, they, they couldn't they, clear, they 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 couldn't clear they the trades in time, so they had to uh, yeah draw down on those reserves. Yeah. Um, Yifeng, it, it's a huge pleasure. I'm afraid that I've got to let you go now. Mm -hmm. um, no hopefully, we find another time to chat about this, but I, I think your insights were, were really valuable to, to, to all kinds of folks, not just the young guys, but also the old guys as well. Um, just to stay grounded, just I mean, to do yeah, your research. I know. I, I, if I can, I, I'll talk up a storm. I know. My wife knows that. And she's actually happy that I got this opportunity to talk because at least I got somebody else to talk to other than her. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, dude. Take okay. care, yeah? Yeah. Yifeng, thank you so All much. Right, thanks. Right, thanks. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. All right. Cheers. Okay.